Danny, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a little while since we spoke to you, and we'll go into the reasons why that's been since you joined us last January. But every single time, and we've talked about this, every single time that the first team plays, the B team plays, there's one question we're getting on social media all the time, which is where you are and what your progress is and things. And we've laughed about it privately, but I think it's important that we kind of give town fans an update because you've had an awful lot to cope with since you joined us in, in the January window. So, Danny, just... Give fans an update on how things started and, and the first injury that, that you suffered in training, that's correct? Yeah, in training, yeah. So obviously I joined the club in, in January and then you know, I knew that there would be kind of an adaptation period and training methods, obviously quite intense training and all these kind of things that I was notified of before I joined. And then unfortunately in my first week I uh, tore my hamstring, so I tore the tendon in my right hamstring. It was a big tear, like a 10 centimetre tear. And it's mad to say, the first went week went really well, didn't it? I remember yeah. speaking to you off the back of it, you'd been involved with Carlos Corbrand's first team. It was a, a good first week, so a real blow on the back yeah, of it. Yeah, it was a positive week, and then obviously there was the cup game against was it Plymouth, wasn't it? And then you know, I would have been involved in that game, so I would have been literally straight in, and that would have been the dream, go straight in, get involved, and hopefully play some minutes in that game. And then, yeah, the first week of training went well, as you said, and it was the day before the game. Um, went across the ball and yeah, my hamstring got a big tear in my hamstring, big massive tear. So, had you ever torn a muscle before in that nature? Was it um, never a, a big kind of more niggly hamstrings and stuff like that? Um, and then obviously coming from a part-time setup in in Ireland, it wasn't you know didn't really work on all these things. I'm not in every day. It's not seven days a week. So. Yeah, I'd had little ones, but that was probably the biggest one I'd had to date, yeah. So what was the prognosis at that point? How long were you expecting to be out for from that January? We knew it would be a while, probably kind of 8 to 12 weeks, and that's probably where it worked out at around 10 weeks, so as expected. Um, but yeah, and then obviously I came back, was kind of getting done all my rehab, worked hard, and felt like I was in a good, good place. Came back, I needed some match minutes in my legs, obviously, so I was playing for the B team, trying to get match fit. And yeah, I got another hamstring injury, which was kind of a freak one to be fair. It was, wasn't to do with, it was just a freak accident. I got basically ran past the defender and he didn't want to run after me. So he just tripped me up basically. And yeah, went forward and yeah, kind of spoke to the physios about when it's obviously a, a vulnerable position for your hamstring to be in, stretching forward, running at full pace. And yeah, tore my other hamstring, the opposite leg. So yeah. That is, it's, uh, it's an important thing to say as well that the uh, the look that you would not have that it's the other hamstring that goes in that as well. It's not like a recurrence of the other one. It's, it's incredible. Combine. I mean, it's, it's you know we're kind of being jovial about it now, Danny. But you combine that coming to a new country, the whole entire place is in lockdown at that point as well. That must have been tough for you because there's there's not like you can really distract yourself with anything else because everything else shut down. Yeah. So how? Be honest, how tough was that period? Oh you know? no, it was extremely tough. Um, it has, it's probably been one of the toughest periods of my life. I've never really had tough, tough periods. I've always been a happy, jolly kind of guy. And then coming here during the pandemic, as you say, moving, coming from Ireland, especially, it's it's a real like community country. Everyone knows you. You walk past, you walk down the street, and you rarely meet someone that you wouldn't say hello to. It's just and then England's obviously a massive country. You can't know everyone, so it's a different kind of culture, I suppose. Um, and then yeah, moving, being alone, family not really being able to come over in the first six months or so. Yeah, it was really difficult and lonely is probably probably a good word to describe the first couple of months that I moved here. How did you get through it? What did you take strength from in that period? Um, it's great. You just have to keep going. This is a lot. Of, I'm well more well off in terms of my life and, than than a lot of people around the world. So I suppose gratitude and, and being grateful for what I am. And yeah, there's a lot of people well up more. I suppose less well off than me in, in, around the world. So yeah, keep, keep staying grateful and yeah, just staying positive. To be fair, watch motivational videos, podcasts, try and keep yourself going. Just little things that can kind of change your mindset on days when you're not feeling too good. And then obviously my family, to be fair, even though they couldn't come over, they were always supporting me. I have a really supportive family and, and the club helped me out as well and made sure that you know there was, there was support there if I ever needed it. Yeah. I suppose the... the one benefit of perhaps when you look back now, joining in January as opposed to doing a summer move is, although you've not been able to be out on the pitch, is obviously the 
the purpose here and your desire. At least you've got to know your new teammates, you've got to know the staff here. Some, I imagine, particularly well within the medical team. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, does it feel like home now through all this period? Because you've had nothing but Huddersfield Town through that Yeah, six probably, yeah, it does, to be fair. I feel like I'm, I'm definitely settled in now. The only thing that's missing is, is the football. I'm really, I'm ready to play football and, and just kind of kick on, I suppose. You had a little bout with COVID as well, of course, and you're not alone in that. Obviously, we had a little uh, spell at the club where a few of you suffered with it, but you must be sitting there at that point thinking, what more can happen here? <laughs> yeah, I know. I came back, obviously came back early, two weeks early for pre-season. And, you know, the phys spoke to the physios at the end, they kind of both the injuries, and they both kind of said to me, you know, you're probably best off coming back a couple of weeks early, trying to get ahead because you've missed so much football. So came back two weeks early with, with the B team and, Felt really good to be fair, doing conditioning and, and training and that. And then when the first team lads actually came back after the breakaway, ended up catching COVID. And, and to be fair, it hit me quite hard. You know, the first probably week I was, I was quite sick. And then even when I tried to come back after that, the club obviously wanted to make sure that you know all the protocols were in place and that there was no problem. So I done kind of a range of tests to make sure there was no problems. And came back there was some inflammation I think around around heart and blood. So I couldn't actually come back into training and. Yeah, that kind of prolonged the process, so I ended up missing probably the most important four or five weeks of pre-season, missed all the pre-season games, and yeah, so. Danny, let's be positive from here on in. We're sat here now, you're smiling, yeah. you're on the way back, we're, we're not going to put a, a time scale on when we expect to see you back out on the pitch right now, because I think after everything that you've been through, it's important to take your time, yeah, exactly. work, you're working currently with the, the sports science team and the physio team to make sure that when you do come back now, this is the comeback of Danny Grant, is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and as well as that, even getting COVID, kind of, I wasn't really over my second injury, so obviously when you do get your hamstring injury, you're, you're in every day and you've got to kind of build that muscle back up or whatever it is, and then to get COVID during that process, it kind of puts that process back a while. So, yeah, I'm feeling, to be fair, physically, I'm definitely over, over COVID now and, and the injuries hopefully are behind me, but yeah, I've got to, I haven't played a professional game now and, 10 months or so so the club's been really good to me like that they're saying there's no rush you know you're, you're still a young lad obviously pushing me to, to get in there but but making sure that I know you know there's no pressure on me just when I'm ready and I'm building up working with the sports science team as you said and yeah feeling fitter and better by the day so that's good and obviously the world's opening up again now hopefully that continues after the pandemic you get into grips with Huddersfield with with Yorkshire you're getting to see some of the sites outside Canal side now yeah absolutely yeah um Walking around, I presume the place will probably be a bit more lively now with universities and that opening back up. So, but yeah, I'm definitely it feels like kind of second home, a second home away from my own home now, and I'm definitely settled in. Now you're able to look forward. How excited are you about when you think about that first time that you will play that professional game, pull on that shirt? You, you see the work going on here every day with both Carlos and with the B team as well. You've had a taste of that. You're seeing at the moment as we sit here, it's it's bearing fruit on the pitch for the first team too. Does all that kind of get you going and, and yeah, make you excited for the future? Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for the first time that, that I walk out with the John Smith and, you know, hear that roar and hopefully fans will be excited to see me, you know, because I'm alive. I'm not gone. <laughs> I'm not gone forever. Being a bit of a breakaway, but yeah, I can't wait. Um, obviously a good start to the season. I've been at the games and yeah, it's, it's looking like things are, are falling into place this year. So can't wait to get out there. It's a funny thing, you know, we spoke to uh, players like Sorba Thomas who joined in the same window, even Naby Sarr going back to last summer, who made the debuts with no one in the grounds. And in a way, that, I feel like that must take away from it a little mm. bit. So I suppose one small positive <laughs> is that when your day comes, Danny, that at least you'll, you'll have that, uh, that proper feel to it. Is that fair? Yeah, you'd say that, yeah. Obviously, football is nothing without fans. We all know that. We've talked enough about it in the last you know, 18 months and, and especially here, the fans are obviously so so proud of this this town and, and being a terrier, so yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I think as well, Danny, just to finish off, when we're getting the questions, you get the questions too, as to how are you getting on, where, where are you, what stage are you at? I take it as a compliment, Danny, because obviously <laughs> people are excited to see you, we're excited to see you, and all the best with your recovery, and we can't wait to see you out on the pitch at the John Smith's. Cheers, thank you.